We're live. Belinda Yarborough, 
uh, Tana McKay, pray for Tamlin Morgan, pray for Thomas Whalen, Tony Jones, Connie Knoyer, and Kathy Chee. Also pray for the uh, our school students, our staff, our bus drivers, all that uh, engaged in getting school back going. Pray for the pastors and congregations as we battle this virus. Pray for uh, Linda Loudermilk and Chris Coon and called in want to be put on the prayer list. Pray for, continue to pray for them and others that may be uh, facing hardships or sickness or, or whatever. For whatever reason, the Bible says pray for one another. Let's do that this morning. Pray for one another. Pray for your pastor as I continue to battle this pandemic thing that's going around and trying to do what's <coughs> excuse me, what's best for our church. And I'll explain a little bit about that here in a minute. But those are the ones that we have on here now. And like I say, if you're watching, you can uh, share that on our Facebook page or on, on Facebook Live now. Or go to our Facebook page. His prayer list is updated daily. It's put on there. If you have special prayer, you can contact us by the uh, Facebook page. And myself will be glad to get it on there so we'll know quickly to pray for you. The, uh, had a lot of people calling, a lot of people asking about COVID in our church, and, and it's getting to be a popular thing. A lot of churches are having problems with it, and the community are being exposed to the COVID virus. And we have a couple of families in our church who were together last week, and uh, they ended up with the virus. And we, as soon as we found out, we decided to close the church town and try to keep anybody else in the church from getting it. And thus far, as far as I know, we don't have any other cases outside those. And we're praying that God will keep a hedge of protection around us, keep us safe. And we're praying, especially for those that have the virus, that uh, God will touch them and heal them quickly, get them over it. And we pray not only for them, but for the others. There's other churches in the community that's had it and have some in their churches. Pray for them and the pastors as they make decisions like I am. And I will say this, when we come back in, we will have a little uh, tighter restrictions on what we do here at the church as far as coming in and, uh, you know, being closer. We need to, we, I think we get a little slack sometimes as this goes on. It's been, what, eight months we've been doing this, and sometimes I forget myself to wash my hands and different things, and I, it catches me, and I remember. And after our, our brothers and sisters have, I ended up with the virus. We find out how real it is and how easy it is to get this virus. So we want to, we will put some more safety precautions in here at the church to try to make sure that it is a safe place to come and worship. I think it's very important that we gather together and worship. That's one reason I don't like doing this uh, Facebook in the empty church. I've got Alice, my wife's here. And started and we did have one visitor that came and we told her she was welcome to stay with us as we worship. But we miss the fellowship, we miss the singing, we miss the music. And uh, it'll all be back very soon. As we uh, remember to pray for those folks, I want to remind you to pray for our nation, pray for our president, our leaders from Town Hall here in uh, uh, Kaiser to the White House. The Bible tells us to pray, pray for those that's in authority. And we need to remember to do that. We need to pray more and more for revival in our country. As we see the news, as we hear the news, and we see how things are going in this country, there's a problem. There's a lot of problems. There's a political problem. There's a sickness. There's a pandemic. There's a health problem. But the biggest thing, there's a sin problem in our country. Until our country humbles itself and repents, we'll never see revival. And my prayer as a pastor here is that we would come together. I'm excited about being in the unity with other churches here in the community this next Sunday, as hopefully we can uh, share with them. We need to humble ourselves, repent, and ask God to heal our land. And as we do this as a community-wide thing, we're going to pray and ask God to heal our community. There's a lot of broken people right here in Kaiser and in our community that needs a touch from God, and we want to pray that, that, that God will hear our prayers in action. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today. I humble myself, Lord, as best I know how, to come before the throne. And Lord, I pray for all those that was mentioned on this list, each and every one. I pray for our church family and friends that have uh, COVID now, that it has become real in our church family. 
and we pray for them, God, and we pray for, uh, give the touch of anointing with your healing hand. We pray for a quick healing and quick recovery. We pray, Lord, not only for recovery from the sickness, but we pray for strength as it tests their faith, Lord, as they sit home and they have to be in quarantine and without family and without friends. Father, we know that it's a hardship because when you have the love of you and you love people and you love your brothers and sisters and you want to be with other people. And God, we pray for those folks while they're at home. We pray that our church family this and may give them a call, send them a card, let them know that they're thinking about them and praying for them. And we just pray, Lord, that you'd be with them and help them, Lord, as you test their faith and, and, and give them a time of, of solitude that they can think on you and think on the things above and just praise you during the storm. Father, we know that we're going to have hardships all through our life. We're going through this pilgrim land that we're traveling through. And it's not our home. It's just an alien land that we're traveling through. And we know there's going to be hardships. You had them. You told us we'll have them. And Lord, we just encourage those of us as well to pray for those that are sick. We pray for those that are sick today that they praise you during the storm. Just give you praise and honor, Lord. It, it'll all bring glory to you to be glorified through their testimonies as they go through this time. We pray not only for our people, but the others in the other churches that are sick. Pray for our shut-ins. Pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, for the Bone Gardener children up in the north for salvation. Pray for all those that's lost and without you, Lord. And we pray for our president, our leaders, from down here in the town hall in Kaiser to the White House this morning. We lift them up. We ask you to be with them, to guide them, direct them, and protect them. Father, we pray for the, our enemies, those that's against us, those that persecute us, those that hate us. Father, we pray for them because you told us to. Lord, we love them. We don't like what they do to us, but we love them, and we pray for them today that you'd touch your heart for conviction and you'd change them. Father, we pray for the services we gather here just for the few people, Lord. We know that the others may be watching and they'll see this message soon. Father, we pray to touch hearts and it'll help people. Father, if there's one here today or one listening that don't know you as a personal Savior, we pray today would be that glorious day. They come to know you as their Heavenly Father, as their Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. As we come together today, once again, we're or remind us we're going through the trying times of Facebook and YouTube. Not one of my favorite things to do. We're reminded of a different world, a different America, even a different community that we live in now. We're living in, I want to remind us that uh, our God and His Lord is the same. It's never changed. It's never going to change. He's still in control. No matter how dim and how gloomy, how dark all this looks to us, God's in control. Uh, what happens in this old world is not really going to matter to us one of these days. God's going to take us home, and uh, that's the day I look for. That's what we call our blessed hope, the day that we'll go to be with our Lord and our loved ones. But I just want to remind us today, as we, once again, the, the doors are closed, and, and the church house seems to be empty, but I, God just reminds me of the scripture that says, we're two and three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. And even though the, uh, there's only a few here, we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in the church today, in this building, and in this service. Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. It don't matter about the situation this world's in. It don't matter about the political corruptness the world, the government, it don't matter about the threats of China and all the other countries and all the prophesying going on, uh, all the different things that we're hearing that the devil wants to put fear into us. And the Lord tells us not to fear, but to have faith. But I want to remind you, no matter how the world changes, how the culture changes, we come into churches with masks on, we wash our hands a hundred thousand times a day, it seems like. Uh, kids go to school with masks on, uh, temperatures are being checked. Everything we do is different. It's so different. It's changing. The world's changing. But our God never changed. Hebrews 13, 8, the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever.
forever. He's never going to change. His love is always going to be there for us. He'll never change. Also, the Word of God never changes. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the Word of God shall stand forever. I want to remind you as we go through these hard times, you know, this caught all of us by surprise if it didn't catch our God by surprise. He knows what's going on. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows who's going to win the election and he knows what's going to happen to America. God is in control. Psalm 119.89 it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. This is all settled, folks. God's word is settled. No matter how dark this world gets, God don't change his word, don't change and if you know his word, and stand on his promises, you can have a happy heart and joy in your heart and a smile on your face as we go through these troubled times that we're in. I want to remind us that even though we go through troubles, we go through changes in culture, even changes in the weather. Don't say like fall and winter, summer no more. The seasons are getting shorter and blend together. God's in control of all that. But he had never changed just because those things change. So what must we do to get through these difficult days and times, through the dark times? One thing we need to do as Christians is we need to shine. We need to let our little light shine. If we had the singers here, I'd ask them to sing this little light of mine today because... The darker the world gets, the brighter the church, Jesus, the brighter the church of Christ ought to shine. We ought to shine in a dark world, Christians. Trust our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, as we finish our race. As we approach the finish line, just keep the faith. Keep trusting, keep praying, and keep obeying. John 16, 33 said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In Jesus Christ is where my peace is. It's not in the world. It's not in the president. It's not in my family and my friends. We find peace in Jesus. It says that you might find peace, might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. If you want to be an overcomer during these dark times, you need Jesus. You need Jesus in your heart. You need to be reminded that he's alive and well. He's not died. He's not give up like a lot of people are. He's alive and well. He never changes. The Bible tells us that. His word is true today as it was 2,000 years ago. 1 John 4, verse 4 says, The honor of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm glad to stand here today, even though we're doing this Facebook and not with our regular congregation, to tell you that I'm an overcomer, not because of Jimmy McKee, but because of Jesus Christ. For he's in me, and I'm in him. The Bible says he abides in me. I abide in him because I've been born again. Overcome them, as we overcome them. He is greater, we're greater, than these in the world because of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. I want to remind those that are suffering with the virus. We're overcomers. He's greater than COVID-19. He's greater than the government falling apart. He's greater than the financial institution falling. Our God's greater than anything. How great is our God? Our God is great. If we were here with our singers today, we'd sing that. How great is our God? When we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and not in this world, we will be overcomers. We will overcome whatever the world has to offer. You know, the Bible tells us in Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God. I think about that a lot lately because, you know, it talks about the uh, breastplate, the shield, your, your uh, breastplate for righteousness. We get fiery darts. Those fiery darts of Satan. And right now there are so many of them that's cast in fear, 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 fear of the upcoming election, fear of civil war, fear of China, fear of Russia, fear of the COVID. That's not what we do as Christians. We have faith our 
God's greater than all of them put together. And we need to be, have on the whole armor of God, we need to be ready to fight the fiery darts of fear that God keeps trying to put in, that Satan keeps trying to put in God's people. Greater is he, Jesus, and he's Satan that's in this old world. So we have one that's greater than the one that's in this world. The one who brings fear and doubt. The one who brings lies. The one who brings deceit. The one that tempts us not to believe the word. The one that tries to change the word to make it fit into the world society. So when we go through these storms of life, we need to draw close to our God. And we need to learn by God's word, that we can resist those fiery darts of Satan. We can go through this world with peace in our heart. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I think that's a verse that we all as Christians need to learn. We've got power over Satan. The Bible tells us that. James 4, 8 says, Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. I think there's a lot of people sitting in the house of God confessing to be Christians and need to clean their heart, purify their minds, and draw close to God. Double-minded. I think about people that are this way one day and they're that way the next day. We need to be settled in on God's Word. It says God's Word settled in heaven. We as Christians need to be settled in God's Word. We need to let it be settled in our heart that it's true, his promises are true, and it's always going to stand. I don't know about you, but God has done a lot for me in my life. He blesses me every day, every hour, every minute, every second. That's what my God does. You know, my heart wouldn't be another beat today if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't take another breath. I wouldn't take another step. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God today. Our God's good. Even in the bad times, even in the storms, on the mountaintop and in the valley, He's a good God. And He's never changed. He's the same God that created the heavens and the earth. He's the same God that created male and female. He's the same God that led the children of Israel through the wilderness. Same God that parted the Red Sea. He's the same God that walked with the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. You know that story in the Bible that the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went and bowed down and worshiped the false God. They told him, even though you put me in there and God don't pull me out, I'm still not going to worship your God. We need people like that today in the church. But when you know that story, the Hebrew furnace and the Hebrew children in there, and when the king came by, he looked and he said, Did we not throw three in? Why do I see four? He's the same God that was in the fiery furnace. Come out without the smell of smoke on them. That's the God I'm talking about. Love me and you enough to send his only begotten son to die on an old rugged cross to give us our salvation, to forgive us, to cleanse us from our sins, and give us the freedom and the peace and the joy that we can have to get rid of the guilt and shame that was once in our life. That's this God I'm talking about. It's the same God that resurrected His Son three days later from the dead. The same God that gives sight to the blind, calls the lame man to walk. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And He's going to be the same tomorrow because He says forever. He never changes. He's the same God that can heal the sick, the same God that can heal our country. Jehovah, our God. He's the same God that heals the broken hearted. You know, one of the things that we have now is a lot of people with broken hearts. A lot of them are broken hearted because of this virus. A lot of them are broken hearted because of the country. A lot of them are broken hearted because of their family. We've got people in this church that's got Children and grandchildren, it's an addicts, it's addicted to drugs and alcohol and other things. And the mothers and the fathers and the grandparents are broken hearted. Their siblings are because of that. God can heal that addict and God can heal that family. He 
He's the same God that saves sinners, forgives them, and creates with them a new heart. That's the God I'm talking about. He's not changed any of that. He still saves sinners. He still heals broken hearts. He still puts broken families back together. He's the same God that says we can overcome if we believe. If we're born again and have Jesus in our heart, we're overcomers. He that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. It's the same God I'm talking about, folks. Our God never changes. This world changes every day. Every day. One of the things that I feel like we can do as Christians is to quit believing all the propaganda that the world puts out that they want us to believe. The uh, media, Facebook, the internet, the newspaper, every, everywhere you get any information. Now, we never know what to believe anymore, but we can believe what's in this book. We can believe the Word of God. It's all truth and it never changes. We, we get all these things and the devil puts it into our mind that it's true and we become fearful. We don't have much faith. I'm reminded as the disciples on the boat that night when the storm came up. Jesus, you know that story, he was asleep in the bottom of the boat. He's taking a nap. Just taking it easy. You know, if you're in the boat with Jesus, he's in control. You shouldn't have to worry about the storms coming up. The storm came up and the disciples got scared and they ran and woke him up. And this is the same God I'm talking about. He came out and he said, Peace be still, and the ocean calmed down. And the disciples said, What manner of man is this that can calm the sea? That's the same Jesus I'm talking about today. That's our God. But what did Jesus say to them? Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little We're going through a storm in the ocean. If you're in the old ship of Zion, you're in the boat with the Lord. You've got to remember who the captain is. He's in charge. He's in control. He controls the storms, and he controls the peaceful waters, too. He never changes. His word never changes. His promise never changes. You know, he promised us that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He would be with us even to the end of the world. As we march on for heavenly home, we're going to say that no matter how much the people change, how much the world changes, the country or our community, our God never changes. Our God never changes. He still loves us. He still offers salvation to us, to those that's lost. He still offers peace. The Bible says that we can have peace in Him. Be not afraid. Be not discouraged. The Bible tells us that. The Lord tells us that. As we go through these dark times, it's going on, and in our church we're having a, a cloud over our church. It's just a bump in the road. God knew it was going to happen. For whatever reason, I told one of our congregations this morning, I I was praying last night and I was asking God, why does, you know, we always want to wonder why bad things happen to good people. Some of our best people in our church are the ones that say we're COVID right now. Which, I don't mean to say best, we're all the same, but very dedicated, big servants in the house of God who serve God daily. And I wonder why is it those that are not those others? And God sometimes I think of it, we know how to handle it. We know how to handle it. Those people there that don't know God would be scared to death right now if they have COVID. They're scared to death of this upcoming election. They're the ones talking civil war and all this other crazy stuff. God's in control. Sometimes the things that happen to us is because God knows we can handle it. He, he don't give us no more than He can handle. It's hard on us sometimes. Sometimes we get depressed, we get church and we just want to give up. Sometimes we get to the point, well, if it's God, why is it happening to me? Why is it happening to the church? Why is it happening to all these churches? Why is all God's people the one getting sick? God knows that we know Him and we can handle whatever the world has to throw at us. Think of this persecution that He went through. Think of what He had to suffer for me and you. 
These things we suffer on this journey going home are nothing compared to what he suffered for us. As we go through these times, I want to remind us to pray for one another. Pray for those that sick. Pray for those that are fearful. Uh, I heard a sermon a while back, a preacher in India that Charlie Mitchell told me about, and he preached a great message on fear. And one of the things that he mentioned in there is he said, Jesus, when he talked and preached, when he said, sin not, as many times as he said that, he said, fear not. He don't want his people to run around in fear. He wants us to have faith. You know, the opposite of fear is faith. We need to put our faith in the Lord. We need to keep it there. We need to grow it. We need to make it stronger. You know, I preached on faith not long ago. The Bible says it. He, he gave to each every man a measure of faith. We were we were given faith. It was a gift of God. And we grow it by being in the Word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If you want to be strong during the storm, you stay close to God. Draw nigh to Him. He'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. And stay in God's Word and let Him talk to you. I want to encourage our church once again, to pray for one another, pray for those that are sick, encourage us, not only our church family, but others that may be less in the day, they may be people on YouTube or Facebook, uh, and still quarantined in their home, staying in their home, staying away from people, some of them because they have to, so it's their choice. Stay in the Word of God, keep your faith strong, don't get weak. You know, a lot of the times, a lot of people, all the time they read the Word of God or hear it is when it comes to church. When we have to close the doors is when you really need to read the Word of God at home. Uh, watch these messages or other messages that Bible-believing, Bible-teaching preachers are preaching. And grow your faith even in the storm we can grow it. In the end, it's all going to bring glory to God. I pray my prayer for our church is that we'll be back together very soon. In a couple of weeks, we'll be back in here. We'll be praising God and worshiping like we always have. We'll be giving God glory. I'm praying that those that's out sick will be healed and be able to be here when we come back with a smile on their face and testify and give them glory to God like they have so many times before. We pray for all those out there that is facing fear and doubt right now in this world. And I want you to know as believers, God don't cast fear upon his children. He gives us faith. He gives us grace and mercy and faith. He gives us patience. He gives us long suffering. Sometimes when we go through the valley, it's our fault. Sometimes God puts us through the valley to test our faith and to help to grow it. Whatever it is today, I pray if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on Facebook. I never do this, but I'm not sure if our YouTube channel has it, but we're a P.O. Box 70, Kazar, C-A-S-A-R, North Carolina 28020. If you want to send a card or a letter, if you have anything on your mind you need to talk to me or the pastor about, or anything we can help you with, or any comments, uh, feel free to send them to P.O. Box 70, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. We'll be glad to pray for you. If you have prayer concerns, uh, let us know about those. We'll be glad to pray for you. No matter where you're at, we love you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And until next time, we're praying that you'll have a blessed week and stay healthy. Remember to pray for our nation. Amen.